Hello and welcome to the last part of the level builder tool. And in this part, we're going to place down some props in the level. So in here, I'm in one of my scenes and I have previously made crate models, procedural crate models. And I've also, for example, made procedural door system that can automatically open and close. And further here, I have also a prop that is a tank model, which I've also made previously in other tutorials. So I want to combine them and procedurally place them around in my level. And let's start with this procedural tank. So we're going to find a specific way of placing this tank. So here back in Houdini, I have all my points that I've calculated by now. And we're going to add on this, we're going to add some points for my tank model. And I will move this part a bit down and I'll create and I will here create some props. So first again, I'm going to take my ground shape. So I'm going to copy this node. And now I have my ground shape. And what I want to do is I want to convert this into lines. So convert lines. So this is now all one line. And now I'm going to make a decision between concave and convex points, which I can get from here. So I will copy this object merge node and replace this null node reference. So again, I want to select points from one to another and I will be using a group node with bounding regions. So I will have a box with a copy to points on this. And in here, I'm going to make sure this is for the corners. This is a point and I would like to use the bounding options so we can get this bounding option. Then I'm going to blast this with the blast node and I will be using this group I just created called corners and now we can have the difference between convex or concave points. And in this case I want to do a non-selected what I want to do next is I will be using a loop for each primitive and I will loop over all the primitives and fuse them together. So fuse and increase the fuse, disable the remove repeated vertices and also disable the normal. And this is then the result I'm getting. And what I'm mainly interested in, if I would preview my ground shape is in these points that are now created over here as you can see they are created in the middle so the idea is that when I have a small piece a small ending with two convex points like in this case or this case we are going to fuse the points together so we have a single point so also here, if I would look from the top view, in here, I have a sort of like an ending and these are two convex points and I want to have a prop there in the middle. So that's the idea of where I'm going to place these. So now I have this position. I want to get rid of the other ones, the other points that I don't need. So I'm going to use this again in a group node. And I'm just going to copy paste this over here and plug this in like this. And then we need to reverse the group so we only have these points. Now, one small issue here is that our normals are not in the correct direction. I want the normals to be facing in a specific direction. So let's say I changed my base shape. And let's say I have, for example, an ending over here. So, and I want my normal to be also facing in this direction. So in here, it should be this direction along the x-axis and over here, it should be along the z-axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer the normal. And a while ago, I created this node here, which called normal direction. And I will be using an object merge. So I'm going to copy paste object merge, reference this node over here. So we have this information and I want to use something called 
attribute transfer. And I want to transfer the information to this input from the second input. And if you look closely, you can see that they are now getting transferred. So we now have the correct direction. Now here is also a small setup on the attribute transfer because this is quite useful to know how it works. So in here I have a grid and a sphere and I transferred the color from one to another. So actually my grid here, if I just view it alone, it's a blue grid. So I had a color, so on the, on the points there is a color blue. Then I have a sphere, which is called red, so on the points it's called red. So I transfer the red color to the, blue, to the blue grid. And in here, if we go to the conditions, we can lower this threshold. And as you can see at a certain moment, it doesn't go as far anymore. And if we put this really low and we temporarily view our sphere, we can see that on the points it's going to transfer this information because the color is stored in the points. If I change the color from points to primitive, notice that also this one changes over here. So it's not based on the points anymore, it's based on the primitives. That's something useful to know in where you are storing information. Either you store them on points, primitives, or somewhere else. So now we have this result, and I'm already happy with where this is going. So let's test this by, again, copy-pasting this instance setup, pasting it over here. And of course, we need to fill in the correct prefab again. So I filled in my small tank model, and let's merge this with the rest, and let's place down a merge here, this one, so we can easily keep plugging in other networks. So again, I might put a frame around it. So this is my network for the tank system. So we can also, of course, name this to so tank systems. Let's save the tool and let's see if it works. So here by community, if I look at my current layouts, I know that in here normally there should be a tank model added because this is the end of my corridor and there should be a tank model added. And just like I predicted, we have over here this model automatically added now. So if I look around, there should be more of them. So just by looking over my corridor, I can predict that there should be one over here. And that should be it. And of course, and there is one over here as well. Okay, so that system is also in place then. You can of course improve on this if you want to. If you want more models, you can add more points. So we have more of these models, but I like to add a few of them where certain endings are. Then here in Houdini, let's add a system for the crates. And I will be going to start from the ground plane again. So I'm going to copy this node and let's make a system for this. So what I have in mind for the crates is I want to place them where we have enough room. And in my case, for example, here on these parts, these are smaller parts. So also here, these are smaller parts. And for example, here we have a bigger part. So I want to place my crates where over here somewhere, where we have enough space for it. And the way I'm going to calculate this space is by using a poly expand 2D. And in here, I want to first of all disable the output and let's set this to offset 4.1. And by using this, I automatically filtered out these smaller, these smaller corridors and I only have here the bigger space. So if I would slowly move this slider, you can see that it's shrinking the shape and when it's getting too small, it's just deleting them. So this is exactly what I sort of like wanted is to just have this shape over here. Now I want to extrude this, extrude. And with this extrude, I can sort of restore my original shape. So if I would scroll my mouse, I can sort of restoring the original part over here. So if I put in four, minus four, 
it was sort of restoring the original size. Now I probably here have to disable the output sides. And now we have this clean shape as result. So now we have filtered out a way automatically for bigger sizes. So if I would change my curve, there should be no problem. And we probably need to go back to the poly expand and set this to the alternating reachability. So it doesn't get issues with this system. So in here we have two bigger spaces, which of course is here and here. So that's nice. Then I'm going to extrude this again. And I'm going to extrude this upwards. And also let's close the shape fully. And I will be now using this to decide if points are in a certain region. So from here, what I will be doing is I will be using a another extrude and this extrude I want to place down an inset and I want to remove the front group so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scatter points on these primitives which is the scatter node like this and what I want to use this system for is then use again the group bounding region and when points are in the bounds over here then we say then they are allowed to place a crate when they are outside then don't place a crate because there is not enough space in the corridor to be crates also here i can improve this system a bit more by using another extrude and we can for example play around again with the inset to get specific regions we can also set here first two individual elements now it's scaling each primitive separately, as you can see like this. I also want to enable the front and disable the side. So we have this, so we don't have also points on the corners. That could also be useful to remove some confliction in the corners. Now there is another option that might be useful here, is that if you go to spine control, we can also use the thickness scale, and this can also be quite useful to define where certain points are scattered. So if you, so as you can see here, points are only scattered on this primitive. And let's keep the scattering to a number, let's say 35. So we just have a few crates here and there. And as a fail safe, I want to fuse them. So if they are close to each other, you're just gonna fuse the points. So let's say value three. So if points are too close, so probably here, these points are way too close to place three different crates. So we're gonna fuse them into one. So you can play around with this value depending on the size of the prop, but I'm gonna just stick here with the value three. So then I want to use the group node to then filter out if the points are in the bigger room or not. So let's call this points prop. And this is of course a point group using the bounding group. And as you can see, they are not getting selected. And the reason for this is because my bounce is just above them. So I have to transform this and move this a little down. And now they are getting selected. So we can now use the blast node and delete the point groups. We don't we don't need all of them. And none. So now we have the correct points. And also let's look at the normal. And of course I can immediately see these are not correct. They're just facing up. But I want them to be nice aligned to the wall. So they should follow the wall. And I will be again using the same trick by transferring the normals. So I'm gonna copy this setup so ctrl c and ctrl v and by default they should be fine so now they are sort of facing with the walls and when i copy them they will be nicely placed there one thing we also can do is adding a peak node here so with the peak node we can then for example push them from the wall or to the wall disable the recompute normals 
and I will be probably exposing this value because I might need to push them a bit more or less. Let's go to the assets and maybe make a new folder for prop settings. And let's take this. So I'm going to call this crates push. We can also expose, for example, the scatter to increase the amount. So amount crates. So of course, this number actually won't be representing the amount we are getting, but it can increase the amount of crates. And also I'm going to set the range to 300 or something. Also this push number, let's put it the range from minus three to plus three. So then I want to create an instancing. So again, copy pasting this, place down the correct naming and that should be fine to go. But I actually know that I've, I have made multiple crates. So I'm going to create this random attribute here again, and I'm going to store all my prefab. So here I have create one. Then in here I have create two prefab and in here I have number three. So I will be using this instead. So not all the crates are the same. And let's merge this with the other ones. If your line is going like this, you can also hold the alt button and we can put a little point so we can redirect this line. So it's going nicely like this. Also over here, we can control this nicely. So I might also put a frame and test them out the result. So in here I have rebuilt my tool. I can already see a crate appearing here. And I have a few more crates here and there being added. So that's nice. So here are a bit more crates. That's cool. So they are not here blocking the way. And when we have a bit more space, we see more crates. So I actually think I, I want to have more crates, so I should be able to here increase this number. So maybe I want to go double, maybe go to 80. And I will have a few more, few more crates here and there. That's great. So yeah, so now I have a basic system to place my crates procedurally. And I can already see here, for example, that there might be clipping with my model. So that's why I also put the push slider. So I might need to put this to 1.5 and this is better. So of course you can always change the prefab, but it depends if you, if you want to change it or not. There is also one more system I like to add and that is then for the doors. So previously I made this procedural door, which also has by default uh, animations to open and close. So let's place them also procedurally in here. And the ID for the door is that I want to place the doors close to the bigger rooms. So when we enter the bigger room, I want to have a door here and here. Also here the same, I want to have a door over here and here. So I actually want to start from this information and build on this. Now to start with, what I would like to have as information is the snapped line. So I'm going to copy an object merge and set snapped line. And drag this over here. Then this line, I will resample this. And I will fill in number four. So what this basically did is adding a point in the middle because I know I have snapped on values eight, so four will be the middle value. So I have no points in the middle. And if you look closely, if I preview my bigger rooms, this point, this middle point is very close to my uh, bigger door shapes. So as you can see, they are lying perfectly on that line. So I will use that also to filter out these points. Before I'm doing that, I want to add normals with the polyframe. And in this polyframe, 
and I'm, I'm going to disable the normal n, flatten the normal in here. So we have a very specific normal. And I'm going to set this to first edge. So it follows the first edge nicely. So now we have a direction on where my door should face. Now I want to filter out this point and again using the group by bounding region and my bounds are this line or this shape and I'm going to use a poly wire for this. So from here to here a poly wire. Let's increase this as well so we have enough room to select it and and let's set this to points make sure we are using the bounding by object and now we are selecting these points then i can blast all the other ones so delete non selected so now we should have a shape like this and this is actually ready to test so this was not that much work to add a small door system so here again let's grab one of these instance nodes and place that over here and fill in the correct name and let's see if this works so plugging in is over here and i'm gonna hold the alt key to create this button and place the line nicely also again putting a frame so you can recognize this later on so now in here i have some automatically placed doors and most of them are placed nicely so they are placed nicely over here but in this case this might be a little bit weirder so i might change the system a bit so we don't have this weird issue anymore so before we can fix the issue i need to first define what the current issue is so in here i have replicated what i had in unity and what the issue is is when i do the poly expand this is now being created so in here we have two separate shapes and this is actually conflicting then when I extrude them and as you can see these are still two separate shapes and then this should be one big shape actually so what so what's going to happen is that when here these lines around this area also doors are going to be placed so that should not be possible they should just be fused together I uh, also built here another system that also takes care of another issue because I noticed another issue as well. And what I did here is I actually did the boolean instead of the poly expand. So in here I have sort of my second issue that I found. And again, the issue is similar here with this line again. So what happened if I use a poly expand over here? And then it's now also a sloped side over here as well. So if I would slowly move my poly expand, you can see that where we had this line, it's sort of it's not connecting anymore. Even this geometry is connected here by these points and so on. But with the poly expand, it's gonna ignore that, so it will break this connection, which is not really what I want in my system. So what I did instead, the system and I got the bottom line. So in here with the group and then I did a poly wire on this so we now have the shape and then I boolean this in the shape so we have now a small line I left a little bit space there and the space that is left now I just use the poly expand again to just clean up the shape okay because the poly expand is pretty good in cleaning up these smaller lines and also sometimes you might have to uh, set this to surface because my first input is not a full close 3D mesh or a solid mesh. This is only a 2D surface mesh. So in here, just fill in surface. And then I can expand this again with an inset over here. And if we compare this then to our original shape, we can see that I solved that issue where we had this cutout over here. So that's the issue that I solved with this part. Now the last part here solves the other issue. So let me switch to the other curve. So the last part here, I'm just gonna Boolean these two shapes in each other. And I'm also using a transform here with scale zero because I noticed that sometimes 
a little bit a difference in height may not complete the boolean so in here i see that the boolean is completed with these green lines if i don't do this transform then we can see that the boolean is not happening because just because there is a little difference in scale so now i have the boolean complete and i'm going to say flatten edges so it deletes these edges in the middle and now when i go here and create my line we are now selecting the correct points over here so otherwise if i would go to my original system doors will be placed here and here as well so as you can see they would be placed in a very weird way where we have doors over here and here and that would be weird so i have to switch that to my updated system so a little changes i've made just to make sure that we get the right information so most of the time i first start with something simple like this just with these two nodes and when i notice the issue i try to rework some of the networks to solve the issues so let's let's save this and see how it works so i'm back here in my scene and it's rebuilt and i can see that everything is now better so before i had multiple doors over here i had i had uh, two doors here going like this so now they're all gone and now i have only one door over here so overall i can tell that the placement of the doors are much better than before one more thing i want to add now is a builder mode so because we made the system a bit more complex and we did a lot of instancing the tool is going to work slower now so let's go over here zoom out and maybe i want to change the curve over here so um, grabbing this point and let's move it so i can move my scene so i can control the layout but it's going a little bit slower so it takes around three four seconds to fully update which is pretty fast if you see what we are doing we are calculating a whole level which is the line so that's pretty nice but if you just want to quickly build level this is a bit slow that you every time have to wait before you can draw a next line so what we're going to do is we're going to build a builder mode so here at the bottom of our network i want to over here with the output use a switch node so switch node and this switch node will switch between the full system which is this input or a new system which is a builder mode so builder mode so with the builder mode i will start from the ground plane again and you can take this as far as you want so i'm just going to extrude this plane like this we can for example close the shape fully or maybe you want to open the front like this and then we can for example place down a bevel and bevel some of the edges so you can for example open or close it that's up to you and what i also want to do is assign a material you could also assign uvs so i'm just going to copy that from here so that will be the uv and that and then we have a material I um, might change the material to a light material and let's plug that in here so now we have built this small builder mode and let's go to assets edit the properties and we need to add a toggle so toggle i'm going to put this first call this builder mode and also name this better so toggle builder then we accept this and now we can hear references by channel then type it toggle builder and now this is linked as well so save this and now we have here a builder mode so let's enable this and we can already see that it's working one thing that i also should add is to have something more double-sided so either the material can be double-sided or i can just add uh, so or i can extrude this primitive so we can add an extra extrusion over here 
and then we can extrude this and output back so we have something like that so now we can easily start building my level so I can move things around I can add uh, continue adding on my line over here maybe it's going like this so we can quickly start building and expanding here the level like this And then when you're happy with the layout, we can then just click this toggle again and a few seconds later we then have a final layout. And here we have our layout. Like this. And I can see. And I can also see here that it messed up with the floor. So let's put my floor back. So now we already have a pretty big level over here. And it's fully complete and easy to change by just going to the asset and changing the curve. So that was it for the sci-fi series. So we finished off with a level builder tool. I hope you enjoyed this tutorials and thank you for watching.